Now that I've been cleaning up some of the mess here, I just wanted to show you a better look at my power backup system. This is one of uh, three that I have. And this one here is an APC 1400. And this gives me about 950 watts of power. Pure sine wave. So I have no problem starting fans or anything like that. So when you look on eBay and look at these power inverters and they're calling them from China and they're saying they're pure sine wave, but then they say, oh, it won't start a fluorescent light, it won't start a fan, it won't start this. That doesn't tell me it's pure sine wave. This thing here will run pretty well anything within its power range as long as there's not massive surge. I have no problems running a vacuum cleaner. I could probably run a skill saw off of it without any problems. So this is hooked up outside to the battery bank which is probably won't be able to see it from here but there's a big box out there that houses my batteries. It's a 24 volt system and I'm using this heavy blue cable that comes in. and there's about a 10 foot run from the battery box. Up here is a 24 volt 12 amp marine charger. I really should have two of these if I want to run off of them with any deal of uh, load, but it will run lighting without any problems. This is just basically telling me my level on my battery. It also does current but only the current that I'm putting in from the charger. It has application if I want to add a grid tie inverter. If I want to tie in with solar, I had the wind turbine in here, but then I took it out and sold the wind turbine because it wasn't giving me any power. It wasn't generating, it wasn't turning because I'm in the in amongst a bunch of trees. So essentially the wind turbine of that type anyways, is relatively useless stuck in here. So what I've done on the AC side is I've gone into my panel, I've separated all my lighting lines that I want to. My total lighting load with everything on is under 10 amps and I've come along here in this white line and I go up into this. So I got one fuse, one 15 amp fuse. I still got an extra socket there if I want to run a second branch and a second unit. I have here number 12 wire. And this goes to a plug on the end and it plugs into the back of the inverter. By plugging it into the back of the inverter, if there's a problem with it, with the inverter and the inverter ever has to come out to be replaced I can merely plug that plug into here and get my lights on. As I had indicated that this does carry the majority of my lighting load for the house as well as my ceiling fans. I've gone around and I've separated most of the receptacles. I've left a few receptacles on with in the bedrooms for lamps only, for alarm clocks, stuff like that, low power stuff. I got to get around to cleaning this up in the panel and closing the panel up yet, but other than that, it's worked out pretty good for me. It does exactly what I wanted it to do, which is to provide me a few hours worth of power in a power outage. The point of the marine charger is these uninterruptible power supplies do not like to run off of a dirty generator. Those cheap ones you get on eBay or the cheap ones you buy at Walmart or Canadian Tire or any of those places. If you're buying a cheap emergency, emergency generator and you're not investing a lot of money in one, if you're just buying something for a couple hundred or three hundred dollars or so, chances are 
the uninterruptible power supply won't like it and it'll keep tripping off and on, off and on, off and on, or it'll run on battery all the time. So what you do is you basically create a double conversion UPS, which is one that runs completely on inverter and also runs on power provided for it from another AC source. So during a power outage that's extended, I can start my generator, plug this into an extension cord, and I can run my lighting and keep the inverter going relatively indefinitely as long as I keep my load down. I don't want to be running around turning on every single light in the house and everything because this one here won't power it. It will eventually start to, to lose ground. This will tell me how many amps the charger is putting in to the battery or to the inverter in the UPS. And right now what we're going to do is we're going to simulate a power failure. There's my main. These will always beep until you click them once. So this light here is not on there just in case I'm working on it. I wanted it separate. These lamps are backed up. I have outdoor lights backed up. I have no problem as you can see over here is a 1250 watt one. This runs my living room, my electronics and my pellet stove. So we'll stop him from beeping. Now I don't think I I got the laundry yes I do I got the laundry room on there now I also got full fluorescent lights in the living or in the kitchen I do not have the range hood for a reason because this plug here I use for the toaster so I don't want high current on there plus this is hooked up to my generator directly so I can plug the range hood in from here into the generator. So as you can see, we're doing pretty good. Ceiling fans backed up. No problem there. Couple more compact fluorescents here. All my lighting is either LED or compact fluorescent in the most. There, a couple more ceiling fans and basement light. So this is what I could have during a power outage with my generator running plugged into the charger. This one here, like I say, is just hooked up to the, the batteries that came out of those other inverters. That runs this lamp and the computer. This is running on the living room one, the 1250, which has no problem. I could watch TV on this for about four hours before I run out of power with the pellet stove going in those two compact fluorescent lights. Okay, so now we're charging up again. Now we're on. We're running the kitchen lights. Now, in the event of a real power failure, I'm not going to have all these big fluorescent lights on running me juice. But the point was, I can run everything off of that inverter. So one of the main advantages I have of having a place like this is the fact that uh, it's under construction so it's ideal for redoing wiring and stuff like that. What had happened here is the place hadn't been used in years and the roof leaked and caused a lot of water damage and stuff like that so I mean 
I just live here by myself now, so I'm in no hurry to get it done. One of the advantages I have of having an unfinished building is it helps me keep the taxes down because every time they try to raise my taxes, then I just appeal it and tell them it's an unfinished building. There's not one room that's complete that's considered livable, and uh, I'm able to keep it down, just do a little work every year on the place. And Maybe it'll be done by the time I'm uh, dead. <laughs> Anyhow, I mean, it's ideal for rewiring and stuff like that. You know, you can't beat having a, having a place that's at the point where it needs a complete reno. It's uh, just uh, totally ideal for uh, doing a project like this.